MLB Network is your exclusive home for postseason baseball. It's game four of the World Series between the American League's Houston Astros and the Cincinnati Reds. What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode 49 of our Cincinnati Reds franchise. Today, we got game number four against the Houston Astros in the World Series. We are up on them two games to one. We got Anthony DeSclafani getting on the mound here against the left-hander Patrick Corbin. Very good pitcher, very solid pitcher. I actually was considering signing him this offseason, and we decided to go with Kendall Graveman. So it kind of would have been a cool matchup to get Kendall Graveman against Patrick Corbin, but as we both know, as we all know, you know, this game's pretty important here. If we, if we could get to 3-1 and one and have to have this game against uh, the Astros in Cincinnati tomorrow, it just sets up for a perfect situation for us to get Dallas Keuchel or Luis Castillo on the mound to get the game number 5 victory and a World Series victory. So, gotta gotta get your best one of your best pitchers who's available out here in this game and try to get this win obviously Kendall Graveman does not match up very well against the Astros so we decided to go with De Scalfani here so we can see that Altuve gets on with a single to lead off the Astros in the top of the first we get Reddick to move him over and then we've got Carlos Correa coming up and getting this single RBI single, so Jose Altuve scores. It's going to be one to nothing here in the top of the first inning. So De Scafani trying to feel this team out. Strike three called on George Springer. Nice little change up outside. He is currently now 0 for on the series. So he's 0 for 14 right now. So he's not having too good of a game uh, and good of a series actually. So got to keep got to keep these big boppers. We got to keep them limited. Their damage limited. So the Reds get out of that half of the inning. Let's go to the bottom of the first. You guys can see the Reds lineup here. Same thing as usual, except Jesse Winker is not playing against Patrick Corbin. He is that left-handed throw. So we're going with Charlie Cor or Charlie Culberson. Charlie Corbin. We're going with Charlie Culberson in the number eight hole and putting Billy Hamilton up top where you know normally he should be. Because he can switch. He can switch hit. So he's gonna be batting righty against Patrick Corbin. He's gonna ground out here to Carlos Correa. And then we get a fly out by Nick Senzel. So seven pitches in for Corbin. So he's being very, very efficient. We're just basically swinging at everything right now. Got to be a little more patient. Got to be a little more patient because we got Joey Votto here coming up. Still seven pitches. He's going to swing at the first one, and that's not a really a pitch that you want to swing at. You, you should be taking that. Even if it's a strike, you should take that. That was my bad. That was my bad. But, guys, so Patrick Corbin settles down. Eight pitches, and he's out of the first inning. So, like I said, we have to be able to work him and get him out of this get, get him out of this game. We've been doing a really good job of that over the course of the season, and I'd love to see it continue here tonight. But we see that we've got two down here, and then a Willie Ornelas double right past the diving Joey Votto there at first base is going to set up the Astros yet again for another possible run opportunity but we do have Patrick Corbin down 0 and 2 but look at this Billy Hamilton cannot get there in time so it's going to be an RBI single by Patrick Corbin I don't know what it is guys with these I think it was uh who was it was it, it was Urias it was Luis Urias against De Sclafani. I think De Sclafani gave up a home run I gotta remember that if he gave up the home run or not to uh, Julio Urias, not Luis Urias, Julio Urias. So we get the top of the third here, and with a runner on third base, Barnhart has to try to make a play back there, and he does. This guy has been money for us all playoff long. Defensively, offensively, the guy's just been a beast. And then we see Alex Bregman who, here, who's also been a beast. Charlie Culberson cannot make the play out in the left field. That was a pretty tough one. I think that he would have had to jump for that in order to get to that to that baseball. The the graphic was on the wall, so just just missed time the jump. That's all that that was. But it's going to be three to nothing here. Astros in the top of the third. Let's go to the bottom of the third here. Fifteen pitches in for Corbin. Fifteen pitches in the third inning. Like you guys, you definitely want to be like within ten every inning, so that he would have been up there in the thirties had we managed this correctly. So now he's at 25. Let's go to the bottom of the fourth inning as Culverson grounded out into that double play. 
So we'll shoot over here to the bottom of the fourth as De Scalfani shut down the Astros in the top of the fourth and we were unable to do anything in the bottom of the third. So this inning though, we are definitely trying to work him a little bit more. Try to put more pressure on the base path. Try to get some more taking some more pitches here. We see that Sinzel was able to do that in a 3-0 count. Hamilton was trying to steal on a 3-0 count. Didn't have to, but now that he's back at second, we're going to tag over and get to third base. Kyle Tucker does not have the strongest arm or the most accurate, as you guys can see there. So good situation for Joey Votto, run producing situation, trying to lift that high and inside pitch, but unable to do so. So can't get the run in guys we definitely we need this run so scott shebler inside pitch that was looked like a change up or some kind of off speed pitch it was definitely was not a fastball but he turns on it gets that single so it's gonna be three to one now reds here in the bottom of the fourth and suarez down zero and two has to protect the plate and he's gonna just fish himself out there and cast it out there and get a single so in Shevler with the aggressive base running on Josh Reddick, who can definitely throw really hard out there in right field, takes third base, and Tucker Barnhart again comes through in the clutch and gets an RBI single. So it's now three to two in the bottom of the fourth inning. And just like we said we wanted, guys, we wanted Patrick Corbin to get worked here later in the in this game, later on in these innings. So we definitely are doing that now. He's got 45 pitches in and Charlie Culberson with bases loaded. He's our left-handed hitting specialist against left-handed hitters. That's basically what I meant. <laughs> he likes hitting against left-handers, and he's just unable to come through. He put a really good swing on it, but just unable to get past George Springer. And we see here an RBI double by George Springer right there. So he finally came through. His hit finally counted. So the Reds are now down 4-2. to two. Patrick Corbin swings and a miss and strikes out against uh, Brandon Finnegan, comes in and gets the relief. So now we're in kind of a predicament here, guys. 63 pitches in, Votto in a 3-2 and two count. Going to get this nice little single here. Definitely worked him. That was the eighth pitch of the at-bat. So Corbin in a little bit of some trouble here now with Scott Shebler up with nobody down, and he's going to send a gap shot out there into the right center field gap, and Votto is going for home. This might be a bad decision as he's got 23 speed. He slides in and he is out. If he had maybe 30 speed, I think he would have been in. But Shevler's looking around like, what? You sent Joey? What? Why would you do that? <laughs> you just took an RBI away from somebody else. We're already down 4-2. to two. Don't be pushing it like that. You had nobody out. So just not a, not a head, heady play there by our third base coach, right? A.K.A. me. So you get Tucker Barnhart here to fly out in the infield. Got two down now, 74 pitches for Patrick Corbin. And now we get Scooter Jeanette up, who has not had an insanely good season. He's been decent. He's been decent. But he's going to take a low fastball. And, guys, I'm pretty sure that that was a ball. I'm pretty sure that was a ball. So Corbin gets the benefit of the doubt. He shuts us down again with runners in scoring position. And now we've got two down here in Finnegan. 22 pitches in is going to get that line out to Jeanette. So we get out of that inning. Winker is going to come in to left field to replace Charlie Culberson. He actually had an at-bat in that last inning as they put a right-hander to face Charlie Culberson. So ultimately we decided lefty against righty. So Winker got the pinch hit job. And then now we're going with Jose Leclerc in the top of the eighth. A situation that he has been familiar with all season long so he's going to get two easy outs here with a strikeout on Kyle Tucker and a ground out here with JD Davis so guys we're going to go to the bottom of the eighth we got to start making some noise here we got Senzel Vado and Shebler coming up against Ken Giles so look at the average here against left-handed batters here 385 right so he's going to hit Nick Senzel and now he's got to face against two left-handed hitters in Vado and Shebler, guys who he, who he struggles against with the 385. And then we see that Votto comes up and gets a clutch single. So, guys, now we have two runners on with Scott Shebler up at the plate, and he's going to get a fastball right down the middle on the outside. Is it going to stay fair? It is, guys. Home run, Scott Shebler. Three-run 
bomb in the bottom of the eighth inning against Ken Giles, who honestly, he, he's got so much potential. The, the, the Astros can't believe it. The Astros cannot believe it. The guy throws extremely hard. He's got all the tools, all the makeup in order to be a great reliever. And he was once. He was once. And then all of a sudden, just in the last few years, he's kind of lost his mojo here. But, you know, we kind of see that happening yet again. So the Reds are now up 5-4 to four in the top of the eighth. Jose Leclerc still out there. And Tucker Barnhart is giving it everything he's got. That was a tremendous play on defense in order to get back there and make that play. So one batter for Leclerc, one batter for Amir Garrett against Jacoby Ellsbury. He's going to get that fastball, and it's a gap shot. But look at this. Shebler coming over, makes the play. Billy Hamilton said, okay, Shebs, you got it. You got yours. So one pitch, one out. We get Amir Garrett facing against Jose Altuve. we got to get this out to win the game, guys, in the top of the ninth. Michael Lorenzen is going to come on out. I don't like Brad Hand's situation right now. He he pitched two innings in the last game, so we definitely want to be careful with him because now if we if we go up three to one here, if we can get this victory, he's gonna be able to close this thing down uh, tomorrow night. So we definitely want to get Michael Lorenzen out here because he's fresh and he's already got Altuve down 0-2 after a cut fastball inside guys one more strike come on let's go strike three in the dirt curveball and Barnhart makes the throw guys the Reds are up three games to one against the Houston Astros we come back to Cincinnati to play game number five for a shot at winning the World Series in Cincinnati I'll tell you guys who we're going to throw out there in the next couple seconds here and who we're going to have to play against. Guys, it's all lining up to be a pretty epic finish, regardless if we win or if we lose. Episode 50 is on its way, right? So it's the halfway point, technically, technically, of this franchise. So guys, I will see you on Monday. Leave a like if you like this thing and if you're excited about the Reds' chances to win the World Series on Monday night for game number five in Cincinnati. So you guys can see up on the screen there, we are taking on Justin Verlander and we're going with our ace, Dallas Keuchel. So guys, I'll see you then. As always, peace.